University of Medical Students studying medicine in the U.S. Um, in today's video, I'm going to share with you the way we study in, um, in the U.S. or even Canada and how medical schools in North America, when I say North America, I mean in the U.S. or Canada, produce doctors. It's a very similar system in both Canada and the U.S. And I think it's important for any pre-med student to know more about this because it's requires like just studying medicine requires a few skills that's really amazing to master while you are an undergrad or, or you're doing your extracurricular activities or just preparing to pursue a career in medicine the reason for sharing this video is just to go over the skills that you need to have before applying to medical school and those skills you might not have them right now you have a lot of time to build those skills as you go through your undergrad your master's degrees your master's degree <laughs> and your extracurricular activities so let's jump right into the gist of this video um, medical school and the learning um, is really different than the way we used to learn in an undergrad at least for me um, medicine is all about like teamwork and collaboration and problem-based learning I know an undergrad like you used to go to a large auditorium with 500 other students and like listen to a lecture for one and, and two hours. For me, that was a passive learning because you're not interacting with your professor that much. You might have the opportunity to go to their office hours, but you don't have this one-to-one -one interaction with your peers per se, this reflection on the cases that you're seeing, or you're not building like a problem solving skill sets that you can use moving forward in your in your career and those skills are crucial for for you when you get into medical school because like you're getting trained to become a doctor and to treat patients and having this high level of critical thinking and analysis is very very important and that's why they shift the focus of education and learning in medical school to accommodate these skills that we need to have and we need to build as we go through our um, medical career. Um, medicine, if you don't know, it's a four-year program. Some schools offer it in three years program, but I personally, if I got the chance to choose between those two, I'm, I'm gonna choose the four-year program just because you have like ample time to focus on your preclinical material and understand that. You also have summer breaks and you also have like two years full of clinical and rotations and like, you know, learning medicine by hands-on experience. So two years pre-clinical, two years in the hospital. That being said, the first two years of medical school, it's not traditional learning. What I mean by that, we have this part or like component of just attending lectures and being in an auditorium with a hundred other students and learn from a professor but we have also a huge component of our learning just based on being in small rooms with eight to ten students going over cases and answer questions based on themes that we had for every week for example so we're in cardiology block right now and if we're learning about heart attack in a lecture we're gonna have at least three cases over this week that are gonna go over heart attack and like a 75 years old patient came to the emergency department and you are the cardiologist there and he has like a chest pain he experienced syncope or he experienced fainting episodes over the last few days what's the first thing to do what are the blood tests that you need to order so this style of cases and step by step type questions it's very important for you to stimulate discussions with your peers um, you're gonna also have your professor available via teams or like webex in every small group we have like a huge screen where the professors that taught this material will be on the screen so you can basically like unmute your group and like ask the question so you have this direct interaction with your professors whenever you're stuck at any question or whenever you feel you're not confident with what the question is asking or you have like a knowledge gap that you need to work on and after every case we have an hour of questions that we need to go over and we go over them in small groups and in large groups and the professor might just you know select random name and ask you to explain why you chose this answer and why your group went with this option basically it keeps you so on top of your stuff like you can't cram in medical school some people do it 
but so that's why like you have to study every day and be on top of yourself which makes sense because you're gonna be a doctor and um, you need to really understand the physiology of everything the mechanism of action like why this medication why this drug was used in this case what's the side effects what the consequences of this order like this blood test I think this is something very special about medical school I'm loving it so far I really like this method of teaching it's very active learning professors have office hours more often than undergrad it's really focused on what you want from your career as a future physician other than the courses that we learned through our undergrad so with that being said I just hope this brief introduction gave you a better understanding of how medical school works and how it's different than undergrad with that being said there are I think six or seven skills that medical school admissions committee tend to focus on a lot when evaluating applicants because those skills are important for your success in your medical school so those rules in short are called can meds rules can meds rules those are mainly used in canada when evaluating medical school applicants but it's also applicable in the states so the first one is scholar um, this is very obvious because you are showing scholarship work by your high gpa by your research by your um, attending conferences like participating in workshops or scientific venues where you show your understanding of science and you show that you are dedicated to learning and academia in general number two is communicator with that being said physicians need communication skills so much because they're interacting with people from different backgrounds from different ethnicities from different understanding of medicine and the way we practice it and even they need to be great communicators between or within the healthcare team themselves right like interacting with nurses technicians social workers family members the patients themselves so they need to be great communicators like i can't emphasize this point and this is a skill that i recommend you work on in undergrad and whenever you apply to medical school you need to have activities that show that you are a great communicator number three is um collaborator so as I mentioned before, um, physicians are collaborators. We interact with other physicians. We refer patients to other um, doctors who have better understanding of this disease. But you have the obligation, like moral and legal obligation, to refer them to another practitioner, to, other, to another doctor who has the ability to perform this procedure. So collaborating with your patient and with other healthcare professionals is very important. And with that being said, I highly encourage you to find a few activities in your undergrad and like pre-med journey to show that you are a collaborator with people from different ethnicities, different religions, different backgrounds, just to carry on this skill to your medical school. So skill number four is professionalism. Professionalism is very important. You are, when are you going to draw the boundaries between your personal life and your professional life, especially when you're listening to so many stories from patients and you're interacting with them, sharing very hard moments sometimes some people might be going through um, abuse at home or they don't want to tell their partners about their disease or you know like a teenager might come to your office and she doesn't want to tell her parents that she's pregnant some people by nature tend to be more professional in their interaction with people but some not right and that's totally fine you have a couple of years to build those skills while interacting with your peers with your professors going to their office hours working on team projects it's a skill that you need to show while submitting your application to medical school that you have professionalism intrinsic in your personality by the time you apply to medical school for example like you show how to interact with different people in a team project when there's a conflict between two people in this group and how are you going to interact and how are you going to resolve um, this conflict you have a deadline that you need to fulfill so how to navigate through those challenges and stay professional and stay respectful to every member in the group is very important so professionalism is key next skill is leadership and this is important i always dreamed of being a leader when i was 13 or 14 years old but i did not get enough opportunities to become a leader. I've been always reading about leadership and like always want to apply it in my life. 
and the moment I got into undergrad and started like school, like university, I took every opportunity to show that I'm like, I have leadership skills because I genuinely like to lead teams towards specific goals that they can achieve and like, you know, bring forward fruitful objectives. So throughout my undergrad years, I have a couple of leadership opportunities and whenever I had like to submit my medical school application I wasn't sure which one or which activity would show this leadership skills because I had a couple and, and I had to choose at the end or narrow down my activities like to two or three that show leadership so with that being said like leadership is really really important because as a future doctor like you are leading a healthcare team you are not the one who orders everything but you are orchestrating with other healthcare professionals just to make sure you have a welcoming environment for everyone to contribute to which reflects on the way you're gonna care about your patient and the way that you're gonna like deliver the best outcome i highly encourage you to find leaders skills and it's very important to grow within this leadership role so for example if you are interested in joining one association on campus that talk about like women's health you start in first year as a junior outreach officer and then like in your second year you get higher up in the hierarchy of leadership within the association as you reach to your third year and fourth year you might be the chair of communication or the director of internal affairs or external affairs so it's nice to show medical schools and even for yourself to grow within the leadership role that you had and don't switch between different organizations because that's gonna confuse the medical school like admissions committee because they're gonna see are you really interested in that position or you're just trying like to you know check off one box of medical school application the last skill that I highly recommend you work on as you go through your undergrad years and pre-medical life is advocacy health advocacy in particular but just advocacy in general because advocacy is a huge topic like I can dedicate an entire video just talking about advocacy because in medicine a lot of people might be vulnerable you might not have every patient speak English very well they might not have the resources you know, they might come from disadvantaged backgrounds they might come from you know English might not be their first language they might be vulnerable patients and you can tell that they are vulnerable and it's not by all means their fault that they end up in that position. Whether it's their mistake or not, you as a physician need to show empathy and support those patients as they go through their difficult times um, in your clinic, in your practice, in your like emergency department, wherever you end up practicing medicine. Being a patient might make you very overwhelmed. And sometimes you just forget to advocate for yourself. Taking this role as a physician and advocate for those patients is a huge thing and that will bring the humanitarian aspect of medicine if you are the emergency department physician and you have a patient just dropped by dressing poorly smells like you know like alcohol or whatever you're not gonna assume they are homeless you're not gonna assume anything about any patient this is very very important you don't know what this patient is going through and you don't know if they're really like homeless or they are like rich people but they went through like an accident or something and they end up with other stuff every patient has a story that's worth listening to worth to respect it whether you agree with it or not and offer them the treatment that they deserve to have um, in your practice those are the candidate roles that i highly encourage you to focus on building while you're an undergrad and preparing for medical school this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it i'm gonna just show you at the end like a few footage from me going to the acs or the essential clinical skills that i had for the cardiac physical exam today i'm gonna talk further about that in future videos but please subscribe if you haven't that already i wish you the best of luck and please please reach out if you have any questions i'm here to help that's it for today and i'll see you next time bye